Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the Life Project with Ifiansa. My name is Ifiansa, and today I have David Tego here with me. He's an entrepreneur and a law student. I'm going to let him give you a bit more information or background about himself. So, welcome, David. Oh, hi. Um, thank you for having me. Um, so I think about six, seven years ago, yeah. just before we finished school. A few friends of mine um, were trying to hands on a few things. And one of the things they were trying to hands on was um, a food stand. So we had okay. a food stand at a, a, a fan fair at, um, on Ligon campus. Okay. So, well, we all went to Ligon campus at the time. So we, there was this fan fair that they had at uh, one of the hallways. So we got to stand and we decided to try, um, try out um, a breakfast bar, a little breakfast mm -hmm. bar because at Pentagon, we had been, you know, ordering food from outside campus. So we said, no, there's nothing like this. Let's see if anybody or the students try will something try something different to enjoy. So I think it started off as a fanfare activity. Then it has become a business. So it was because from that one event? It was from that one event. event. So subsequently, after that one event, I think we put out our phone number for the duration of the whole week. So during the whole week, we we'll come, we we'll said that people will call us to their rooms, we we'll deliver, and we we'll make the food for them on the food fairgrounds. But right after we finished, we kept getting calls, and we told them, "Oh, sorry, this was just for the short <laughs> period of time. Yeah. It's not anything that we intend doing further." Okay. So one of our friends, after the whole, he said, "You know what? This could actually turn into a venture." So we said that, "Okay, you know what? Let's just look at the cons and cons. Let us put ourselves together and let us see." At the end of the day, I mean, the entrepreneurs are there to solve a uh, problem. So we were like, okay, this is a little gap in the breakfast eating of the uh, students on campus. So that's how come, you know, we came up with this. Venture. What's the business called? It's called Ruiz Breakfast Factory. So it's, okay. it's a factory that chairs out breakfast on a daily basis for students on Lincoln campus. Excellent. So now, initially, we're seven um, students on Lincoln campus, but we decided okay. that, you know, we might as well expand to outside campus. So we have a whole delivery train, you know, that delivers breakfast on Legon campus and out of Legon campus. So this was while you were in school? No, this was just after we finished school. Oh, so okay, when we okay. yeah, so we waited a year and a half after we finished school during our national services and we started to set up the business. So the event happened during school. During school. school yes. And then after it took us a little year, time okay. yes, because we had to put ourselves together. We had to get the logistics. We had to do a little market survey. We had to Collate what the students would want. So essentially, you planned. Yes, yes, how yes, it was going yes, to. yes. We did. It what took us a year and a half to plan. Hmm. It took us a year and a half. So how did you guys raise the capital for that? Did you all just decide, well, hmm. let's put our money together? And... So I think that's why it took a year and a half because okay. we decided not to take any loans. So I think it was our personal savings and a few from family and friends, but mainly our own yeah. little okay. cash that we gathered. Okay. So what we did was that the initial setup of the place was done by a friend of ours, she's an architect. Okay. So she helped us with the initial design, initial um, interior decorating space. Yeah. Then the little that we had, we bought uh, equipment. As we went along the way, we changed some of the fixtures and fitting with the appliances there. So it was a little startup that we've... So it's, it was on campus? Yes, it's on Legon campus. Yes, it's still on Legon yes, okay. campus. So how many, were you, how many friends came together? Initially, we were about four. Okay. Yes, but now we're just two partners. Okay. Yes. And what was partnering like? Because I know Ghanaians are typically very careful about partnership, but we fear <laughs> yeah, partnership. I, I think Ghanaians fear partnership mainly because I think we like the sense of ownership. Everybody, everybody, everybody wants to feel wants like their name owner, on it. Wants their name on it. Wants their boss. But I feel like yeah. partnerships, properly executed partnerships, it helps grow the business in terms of the skill set everybody brings on board. Their, their strength and weaknesses on why you start a business. So each partner is bringing a different skill set aside what you have. That's true. So and that's what's going to help the business grow. Um, for example, in our business, we have, when we started initially, one of our partners was very good in social media. You know, one of our partners was very good with negotiation. One of our partners was very good in joining the business model. Okay. So I think that all helped that, you know, in putting up together something. Like what we have now. So what was yours? So I helped with doing the business model and okay. the financial analysis and also the market survey. Okay. Because I had been I had lived in on campus in that particular hostel for four years. 
So I knew my way about I knew yes, had an idea of what the student population what the students would want. So that helped and also with my finance background, okay. trying to help with the the business model of the business. Did your law has come in at that point? No, it didn't actually, funny okay. enough, it didn't. It was actually after I started reading law that mm. we realized I realized that there were a few things that we had missed. Okay. And I would advise anybody who starts their business to seek proper advice, proper legal advice and proper business advice. We didn't have the business acumen because um, I had an economics background, my partner also had an economics background, the other partner was a business finance major and another partner was a social, um, a computer science analyst. Wow, so we, okay. we, yes, we had that, at least for the business side, we did have that. Yes. And also to draw the structure on how the business will operate. What we didn't have was legal advice. So going forward, after I'd read a few things in my company, I read, okay, this is why certain things, or this is why certain things had to be done. We didn't understand some of the regulatory processes that we had to undertake. So we started a while, after a while. That's for the business in general. For the business in general. Okay. And I feel like this is where, maybe a lot of businesses are lacking education in that. Because I, I go to register general, I'm just asked to register a business. I don't know why I'm asked to register a business. I'm asked to draw a contract, I don't know why. But now, I mean, I'm much better suited to understand the rationale why we have to do certain things. So as partners, did you have contracts saying that, okay, this is what We you did. Mean? Initially, we didn't, but going forward, we had to. I think that that's the number one okay. important thing. Now, any, any legal advice I'll offer anybody starting a business, you need to because the contract will stipulate the terms, okay. the terms of the partnership okay. and and the remuneration and the exit clauses and how the partners intend to go about the business. Mm. So I think that is very key now. Hmm. Okay. So when you started, there were four of you, now there are two of you. Yes. Okay. Yes. How did that also affect the business? Did losing, if I may say, losing two people, did it really affect the business or did you have a plan to things just sort of moved? I mean, the business moved seamlessly, okay. but there was a little, we lost something because of the skill sets that the other partners brought. Okay. So instead of four persons sharing ideas, when I went to bounce the ideas of two people, this is what we kind of lost yeah. in the in the business. So it's just two people that are sharing the ideas instead of the four. Okay. So because I, I am a strong believer of the strength in numbers, even though people will not accept, but I feel like once you are able to ponder through a certain idea, you know, you fine tune it and you will give it a desired result. So I can say that you encourage partnerships. Yes, I would, I would very much encourage partnership. I think partnerships also help in the longevity of the business mm. because people would, yes, we are all human beings. We have our differences. We have our disagreements at certain points. It's bound to happen in any human society. However, you, you come out of the decision making body or process much better. And you're able to put the business at a better footing than you would ordinarily have done taking the decision all by yourself unilaterally. That's true. That's true. Okay. So, um, how many people do you have on your team now? This is besides the two of you who run the business. We have a staff of five. Okay. Yes. Okay. We have a working staff of five. Okay, then that's, good. yes. We've outsourced our delivery. So, that's okay. five working. Um, five permanent staff and a uh, delivery team. You still have the delivery Yes, team. yes, okay. we do that. And then um, sourcing the food and things that you need, the, how is that? Hmm. Um, I think our business has evolved one, and our business has gone through, like any other business, we've gone through challenges, and I think we've also gone through challenges with the global setting. Okay. I think the global supply chain has affected every business, and I don't think Rose has been left out there. We are dealing with market price volatility, you know, interest rate volatility, and also main thing is the, um, the price commodity exchange, the CD to dollar exchange. Some of the products we source would have wished that Ghana produced most of the products, but unfortunately we don't. So we have to rely on importers. Okay. If there's a global market shortage, we don't get some of the products. There are some products that we would prefer if we could source here. For example, we use a lot of dairy products. So there's milk, there's eggs, there's cheese that we do. We also use products, bacon, sausages, chicken nuggets, and ham. Um, something like bacon, when there's a global shortage or there's a, unfortunately, there's a, an outbreak of a disease, yeah. 
there's a whole or there's a swine flu there's a, it affects the value chain exactly. and we here yes we are not left out you know it's either we don't get the commodity or it's twice the price so how did you cope during covid i'm just thinking and um, covid was a very terrible touch, time yeah. for us because first of all legon university of ghana campus legon was one of the first to be hit because okay. there was a covid case involving uh, students who had traveled so no, legon was right, shut right. down so we're the first to go into lockdown our business went to lockdown before everybody went into lockdown. So in March, we had to shut down because they gone had to quarantine, had to track the student body. You know, I think we even had one person who had visited us from the list of people that the school was um, doing contact tracing for. Yeah. So automatically, we had to close. So it was a very dark period. But then you've done know. well, because I'm just thinking, yes. you went through that and you still, you're still doing well now. So then Because the student had been craving, you know, they had been yeah. at home, they had been craving, we opened up, and the school opened up a bit last year, but this okay. year, everybody's back on okay. campus, God, yes, by God's grace, everybody's back on campus. So I think the students had missed our food, so I think that's what <laughs> helped us. So I can say you have loyal customers. We do have loyal customers. Okay. I, I won't lie, I think we probably have one of the most loyal customers you would find. We do have loyal customers. That's good. And I think that's what people remember us for, the food, the taste. Yeah. So I think that's good. And that leaves you for some corporate events too. And I yes, know we loved your true, food true, then true, too. True, true, true. So yes, do have, apart yes. from campus, what how else how who else do you cater true. to? We actually cater for everybody who wants our services. Okay. Um, we enjoy ball catering. I think we've done that for a few banks. Your bank as your former bank as one of yeah. the examples. I think we, we, we enjoy doing that. We also do when um, we cater for events, maybe engagements, uh, bridal parties. We, we do that catering, so okay. that's fine. I don't think there's anything breakfast. So and breakfast is the most important meal of the day. So <laughs> can't go wrong. Okay, excellent. So um, social media has also changed drastically, probably since you started. Yes, How social has media. Maybe added value or not you know how is it going social media to... has changed yeah. evolved greatly since we started which is true i think our business now is social media dependent now social media dependence is that it draws us new customers that we we don't see faceless customers people who okay. order through our instagram channel where my instagram portal most of the time social media also encourages feedback Okay. Now, it carries feedback that people are able to direct people to us. People are able to talk about our food without necessarily we posting our food out there. So mm. people do advertisements on our behalf really? through social yeah. media. The only th the other side of social media is when you get a backlash, it's on social media. <laughs> Everyone knows. So yes. Everybody knows. So we've had a few cases, not necessarily. Um, we, it, it, well, we had this incident last year. It actually wasn't from us. I think somebody had ordered food from campus, which is a good thing. Automatically, everybody thinks it's once it's breakfast, it's from Rose. So I think the lady had a bad experience with the food, and she went ranting on, I think, her Twitter page. But we we had a few people direct the tweet to us, which shows how people... Are, if they know you... Exactly. Yes, yeah, so people directed the tweet to us. People said, no, they didn't think it was from us. So we contacted the lady, we off, we sent her food, and we asked her to bring her back the food that she had been ordered. When she brought the food to us, we realized, oh, no, this package is not from us. So when we, we contacted her, she said, oh, even the packaging that she got is entirely different from what she had, you know, she whoever ordered for her. So she apologized, she had to retake down the story. By and that she, point, the damage. Yes, but the damage had been, some damage had been done. Some I wouldn't say yes, but it was good because we got a, a new customer. Who has become mm. uh, undoubtedly an ambassador in inadvertently so it was bad publicity but we i mean it Ten was out. turned <laughs> yes it was turned out for our good not because we pushed her but because she realized that okay it was an honest mistake and i am as well order from these people and you know yeah. save myself the trouble interesting interesting yeah. it was a very interesting episode of that day <laughs> yeah so do you do you take advantage of social media now? We, i take advantage of social media because Another incident that happened, I think this was in February. So I think a certain lady had gone, a very popular influencer, food influencer, she had gone to order food from breakfast from one of the cafes around. And I think she didn't get her value for money, in her estimation. So I think she put it out on social media and everybody was commenting and, and she had a number of people saying, oh, why don't you try food from 
room, you see, okay. because we think it's affordable and we think it's the taste is, is pretty much value for money. So she said, okay, she gave us a call and she said, look, well, I, I put up this tweet, this which is what I do. Mm-hmm. And I have a lot of people telling me that I should order your food. So we actually sent her free food just okay. for her to, to use try it, it to try it out. out. And she was, you know, blown away. <laughs> she did the marketing for us. I like that. Yeah. It means you are doing something right on your side. I believe so. I believe because so. Because to have the loyal customers, yes, to have yes, people yes. wanting to market for you, yes. you must be doing something I think, right. I think that's the most important thing. I think yeah. another thing that we pride ourselves on is the taste of the food. Okay. So I think that, you know. I can vouch for that too. Yes. <laughs> I think we are not capitalizing on the students with the market, mm. with the money, because I feel like we've been here for a bit. We've been here for over five years. So I think that, you know, for a business in Ghana to thrive over that long, you should show you that you're doing something right, especially in the taste. Yeah. You know, yeah. Our, our foods are, it's not necessarily a fast food, it's, it's almost gourmet because everything's yeah. fresh. The eggs, the mix, it's not any pancake mix. So yeah. we take some time. And I think the students have that patience because of the, the, the taste that they enjoy from our food. Okay. So, yeah. So you've been in existence for five years. No, we've been, actually been listening for seven years. Seven? Yeah. What has the growth been like? Because I know entrepreneurs struggle with patience. We've had, yes, the growth has been steady. Okay. We've actually had to clear staff. We've had to hire new staff. We've had to let staff go. We're in the process of opening a new branch okay, soon. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. We are still in the process. I must mm. give out the information now on yes. the location because we are still working on a few modalities. Okay. But I think that we are at the point that we are ready for a next step. We are ready to open another branch, another outlet. Mm. So out of, if, I mean, it might be on the Gong campus, it might be around, it might be out there. But I think that we have reached that stage that we are ready for our next level, yes. Okay. So what are some of the challenges that you face? As an entrepreneur that you think that you had to overcome to sort of get to this point um i think one of the challenges that we had to face or i have had to face is that you have to be compliant now you have to be compliant with every regulatory authority now some of the compliance might mean that you are going to have to suspend your profits for a particular time because you have to put things in place Mm. Now that is also been a very tough learning curve and very it's, it's taught us a lot of financial discipline okay. because you need to pay your taxes, you need to pay your um, your SNITs, you have to pay your um, food and drugs board, you have to you know do mm. their recommendation. We've had to change the occasion twice, you know, wow. because you know food and based drugs, on regulations. Yes, based on yes, on based on regulations, and that's one thing that we didn't know that we know now that they are very tough regulations. Oh, okay. And I think that that keeps, and I think maybe those are the things that have helped our businesses, okay. or have helped our business in terms of the quality that we deliver, because we've had to you know be compliant to the letter. So I think those are one of the things. The other thing that has been another challenge has been logistical problems. Now, when I mean logistical problems, we've had to buy some of, we've had to buy actually a whole kitchen set as an industrial, industrial mode. Now, some of these things are not produced in Ghana. Some of these things are exported. So, some of the parts you might not get when the, when something is broken, when something is broken, you might not get, getting somebody to fix that part is also a challenge because the manufacturers are not here. So it's also a challenge going around to get something to fix if there's a little problem. So you might have to change that entirely when you don't have the financial muscle to do that. So those are the things. Also with the supply chain, like I said, there's no bacon, there's no milk. You know, you just have to. And also increasing your prices. I think especially in the last two years, it's been. I was re- coming to that. <laughs> We've had calls. Everybody calls me. Why have I, you changed the price? Why have you changed the price? And they're like, no, we, I just bought food last month for X amount. Why is it Y now? I think consumers need to bear with us. I think that <laughs> even though we are in to make profits, yeah. I think customer satisfaction is key. Yeah. I don't think entrepreneurs or business owners want to increase their prices. We need to stay in business for you. If we do not stay in business, we can't offer the services. That will have us cutting corners. And if we cut corners, our same loyal customers will call us and say, mm, so they had your food. It was different. It was different. What's happening? And why are you people being quote and quote 
Why are you people being chiseled? Why are you people rationing yeah. this? Why are you rationing that? We can't. And I think that that is one challenge that we are all have. We are all facing. So how how are you managing it now? Because I know over the past maybe six months, prices of everything yeah. goes up almost every other week. every other week. So what we've how had to do is we've had to revise our menu three times. Mm-hmm. Aside revising the menu in terms of price, we also had to do portion control, rushing control. So our rule is now you eat what you can afford. So okay. the fact that you have maybe let's say fifteen Ghana CDs, it won't stop you from having your popular bacon, or popular pancake, popular meal. Just that maybe the portions would have reduced, okay. but it will still you you still be served okay. with whatever you you've had previously. So you keep revising your models as you go. We have, and it's been very tough thinking outside the box, you know, because yeah. I think that. It's not just about increasing the price. You need to let the customers come back and feel they have value for money. Okay. So I think that's that's the main thing. Okay. So is Rois your main business? And is something do you do something else? Yes, I do something else. Okay. Um uh, I'm almost done with the Ghana School of Law. Okay. I'll be done this year, God willing. So Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's also taking much of my time. I do a, a little consultancy okay. for a few businesses. Yeah, so that's what I do. So I ask us most entrepreneurs have something else they are doing. I know, think so. I think it's I think it's important to yeah. I think it's I important think so. to I think it's important to have multiple streams of income. I think okay. that I had to go back to school, you know, to fulfill another passion of mine, you know, aside running businesses. So I think that, you know, I'm almost done with taking that box. <laughs> or done with taking that box. But I, 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 I think it's important. I think that it helps you grow your business. Like I said, with this my with this legal acumen of my we are regulatory compliance. That's that's number one. Because we have to file our taxes, we have to, you know, abide by the company regulation, we have to file an annual return. And so I think we're not deficient in that aspect. And I think that it helps us also entering into other contractual obligations with some of our vendors, some of our suppliers, you know. I, I think it helps if entrepreneur has another skill set. I, I think it's I think it's yes. I think it helps the business school. Okay. okay. Yeah. Have you worked a nine to five before? I have worked a nine to five. I I most likely will go back to a nine to five. Okay. I was gonna uh, ask that. Yes, I'll go back to a nine to five. But I think that we've put the business on a pedestal that they don't need me there physically, and I think that's one advantage I I, I have, and I'm grateful for my the workers at Rovis. I mean the workers, the ladies have been amazing. I think that we've put structures in place that I don't go there often because law school has been going in. I've been on law school for five years. So I've been doing rules for seven law school for five. I can count the number of times they see me. I mean, especially when it's exam period, you probably yeah. don't see my shadow. Either I'm in the library and I'll pop up for a sandwich or two. But I think that, <laughs> yes, I think that they are, they are, the business model is standing on its feet. And I think that's what is important. And then they be, when I'm not there, we really should be able to fly. Yeah. When I take a vacation, where we should be able to play because at the end of the day, Rose is going to be there. It would most likely outlast me, you know. And I think that's the main thing that it should probably continue for you know successive generations. So it doesn't have to end with me. So I like that. I like yeah. that a lot. Yeah. So um, let's talk about sacrifice briefly. If yeah. you've you've gotten the business to to this point that you feel that. Next year or maybe this year, if you go in nine to five, go nine to five, you could yeah. take that yeah. on. Yeah. Would you say that that's possible because of sacrifices that you made putting roles together? On, yes, I, yes, yes. And maybe what have you sacrificed to have? And I think with point? with everything, is a, a business like your baby. You know, it's like a toddler. You have to feed it. You have to give it constant attention, or even like the little plants that you have. You have to water it each day. It's out day in day out for it to go to Germany to become a mighty tree. And I think that those little the most important thing with sacrifice is the time. Because you have to be there presently, you have to be there. It's it's not an easy venture that setting up a business going to sit in your house or going to do a nine to five, you know. It's 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 very tough because you have to watch it grow and it needs a lot of your attention. So like I say we have to change personal because at some point we realize that the person that we have we're engaging in petty thefts. Mm. They were pale free. So but we, we couldn't detect if we're not there. You know. So I think that now the structures are in place to check all these mechanisms. And they, it, all these structures 
they don't require us to do that physically. Mm -hmm. So my partner is undertaking a PhD in Canada. I think she'll be done. This okay. So she hasn't been, she's been in and out of the country, but you know, the business is still thriving okay. because, yeah. Well, then good, good job. I think yeah, you've done yeah, really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I'm asking some of these questions because I tend to hear a lot um, of entrepreneurs, maybe, I don't want to say complain, but have difficulty sacrificing I think, now. I think that is the main thing. I think even if, you, now because because even if all of us at that point had a 9 to 5, I think I was... Yeah. Um, Doing it, I was in insurance, you okay. know, and and at that time, the only time I could come to Rose was after five or after six days mm -hmm. when I closed from work. I was there on weekends, even while I was working, I was there on weekends. Every weekend, I was there. Yeah. So I think it took a lot of my time, you know, that weekend that I was spent sleeping or watching football with friends. I have to be there yeah. since there throughout, you know. I think that. And now you can afford. Now I can to afford. Watch football yes, with now, friends. <laughs> now I can afford to do all that now. Yes. But yes, yeah, so with all that. Me being able to afford their luxuries also comes with the income that has come with. Mm -hmm. So now your money is working for you. So you don't have exactly. to be there, but you know. Okay. Was there ever a period where you felt like there's not enough money coming in, or you just knew that I just have to suck it up and just keep going, oh, even yes. though the money is not coming in? No, like I, I think I think that yeah, there have been times. I think even before COVID or during the COVID period, I think the COVID period was a very tough period for us yeah. because. There was, no there was no money coming in because we yeah. sitting at home. I think that is what informed me of saying that, okay, maybe you need to do another business or another 9 to 5, you mm -hmm. know, because we're locked down. The whole world was in lockdown. There's nothing you could do. And our business was, you know, stationary. Okay. Once COVID hits, once we're locked down, everybody sits in at home. But the girls have to be paid because this is what they depend on. So I think oh. that that made us rethink a lot of the things, you know. I think it made us also look at trying to do delivery more. Because I think when the lockdown, the quarantine period was lifted, that's one thing that we, we had started to do. Okay. So we did a lot of deliveries because we could deliver to our home, but people couldn't come to us. Mm -hmm. So I think that an, another thing too is that people could identify and interact with through social media. Okay. So that's when people would get feedback. When are you coming? When are you not coming? And I think that it was easier to disseminate the information through social media. Okay. So I think that that's us. And COVID has made everybody think outside the outside box. The box yeah. so, yes. And I think COVID has made us realize that we need other outlets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so true. That's yeah, so true. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this has been excellent. Thank yes. you so much. You're there are entrepreneurs watching who either haven't started. So when I call them entrepreneurs because it's inside. Yes, yes. <laughs> and there are those who have started and are struggling. And there are those who are thriving. What can you say to all three of them? So those who haven't started, I feel like the most important thing is to start. Just start. Because if you don't start, you never know. It will just be new, you know, it's just like the the um, the talent, you know. You have your talent, you haven't used it, you know. Jesus said, whoever has that one talent, he said, oh God, I have only one talent, I haven't used this. And he, God took him back. You must as well use that talent, you know. Once you use that one talent, you probably gain another talent. Yeah. So I think that's the most important thing. Any entrepreneurs going through a tough phase, um, I would just say sit tight, you know, buckle your seat belt. I think, you know, joy comes in the morning. Um, I think it's everybody's facing that challenge, yeah. not only you. I, I, I'm also I'm still <laughs> facing that challenge. So I can, I can share your pain, but I feel like COVID happened, COVID was lifted. We all started working. This is a little economic crunch. I think it would also pass. But I think that the most important thing is not to yeah. shut up shop and say, okay, I'm done with this because you may never know tomorrow will come. Yeah, that's true. So, and entrepreneurs who are thriving, I keep thriving, you know, I think that it's, it's, it's what is going to drive our economy. You yeah. know, I think the little businesses that you have on the store, on the side, and anybody who has a nine to five has an entrepreneur uh, aspiration, I'll tell them to go for it. Mm -hmm. Do not kill one because of your nine to five. No, I think that that would, you know, even when you're doing your personal finances, you realize that. This little income will help you exactly. go a long way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you so so much. This You're has welcome. been amazing. I hope you learned something. I definitely learned something. And um something I hope you did too. And um a huge thank you to you, David, and You're a welcome. huge congratulations. You've done really well. Thank you, thank you. And thank I think you. it's it's necessary that we recognize and celebrate our entrepreneurs who have been in the system and will continue yes, to be yes. in the system. I mean also congratulations to our customers who keep coming every day. Yeah. I think thank they keep you so us much. going most of, most of So thank you so much. Thank you for watching and um 
like comment subscribe comment for the subscribe. next one yes like i want to see the comments too yes, <laughs> thank you so much bye bye, bye.